All right, well, just, just to refresh everybody's memory, uh, about two plus years ago, the select board asked me to assemble a group for an ad hoc committee uh, of veterans to redesign and upgrade the, the veterans memorial. So I, I called on Alan Thackeray, Raymond Belayo, and Larry Ashman, and the four of us have been working, uh, you know, for the last couple of years. Of course, we had a delay with COVID. Um, but we, the first thing we did was we, we contracted with the Conway School of Landscape Design, and they came in and they really set the, the ground rules for this, this area. And their vision was to open up the area, remove the shrubs. Most of the shrubs were invasive. Um, and to uh, turn the monument 180 degrees so that it faces to the east. They wanted to maximize the view so people coming in can, can enjoy the view to the east. And, uh, and they also they can turn to the west to observe the monument and any other um, celebrations that might be going on around that monument. Um, we did interview three landscape designers and we finally ended up with Conway. The um, Conway uh, gave us the idea of not just an open space, but to define the monument with a, some sort of a backdrop. And so we settled on a Goshen stone wall. Um, and Brian, you, you could put that up now. So, so looking uh, fa facing the east, it, there's a um, there's a black arc and that is the Goshen stone wall, and it's approximately 18 feet long, two feet high, and two feet in width. And in front of that is the memorial. And you'll notice it has been moved it's about 12 feet to the south of where it originally was. Um, and on either side of the memorial, there are two um, <clears throat> areas to display additional monuments recognizing those who served before World War I and after uh, Vietnam. And I'll get to that in a moment. Um, as we progress down to the new flag, um, there is a garden around that, <clears throat> as well as other landscaping gardens you can see to the north and to the west. Um, there is a proposed sidewalk that goes through and I'll let Keith speak to that because he's, he's more informed on that than I. Um, there is a barrier of shrubs, low shrubs that go along this existing old sidewalk across private property uh, to actually discourage folks from walking, wandering onto private property. They will not obscure the view at all because they're going to be low. Um, the Flagpole, just to revert back to the flagpole, will be illuminated. Um, there is a pole mounted light that will shine directly upwards so that it will not be invasive to any of the neighbors or to, to any traffic. Um, the, 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 I wanna go back to the boulders, the, on the other side of the monument there, they're flat face boulders with a bronze plaque attached to them, approximately 18 by 18. Uh, and they're gonna display the names I mentioned earlier. The Historical Society has been really helpful to us and they have supplied names from the French and Indian War um, right up, up, up to World War I. Uh, there's about over 300 names and I think they are still researching those to make sure there's no duplication and to give us a final um, template uh, probably in the summer. So this is a nice addition to our monument. Uh, these, I can't determine if these folks were Waitley residents, uh, how long they were there. We're gonna have to rely on the historical work that uh, Ina Kane did, our former librarian in the history of Waitley. So we're gonna, their research, we're gonna take is good and, and we're gonna publish those names. Um, we are also looking to add any corrections and I've already received a couple from World War I and World War II and Vietnam. And they will, they will be corrected. 
And we're also looking for names from people who served subsequent to, to Vietnam. And I, I'd like to note now that those names are very difficult to get. Um, they're, they're covered under privacy laws. There is a database and we can't access it. Uh, people have to come forward. We have to give us permission to put their name on it. So it's, it's not an easy process. Names are beginning to trickle to me now. Um, and we'll ask for DD-214s, which identifies their term of service. Um, and typically a veteran is defined as a individual who served um, more than 180 days of continuous service um, or one day in combat. So- um, Where am I gonna plug it in? I'm again, 180 days of continuous service or one day in combat. Um, that is that rule allows the, the vet to be classified as a veteran. You can enjoy veterans' health benefits and uh, financing benefits or whatever else the VA has to offer. But those that's are, a con you know, excuse me, Jim. That's a contemporary definition, right? That's correct. That's what the VA uses when you sign up. They go through the DD two fourteen. If you meet that criteria, you're issued a card and you're part of the system. So That's if what, you're going back to the Civil War, that might not be the criteria. No, no. They, they didn't have DD-214s in the Civil War. No, I'm sure they didn't. We're going to just assume that Ina's historical um, studies have... Uh, well, Derricka Smith is, is polishing them up big time, so we'll get them to you. And we're going to accept all of that. Um, the other issue is what do we do with active service? Um, I don't know. I haven't figured that out yet. I'm reaching out to some other veterans, uh, officers in other surrounding towns. Obviously at one time they will become veterans, but right now they're not classified because they're doing active duty and they've reached the 180 day mark. The other issue, and I think this reared its ugly head back in 1975 when this was last worked on is what do you do with National Guard and Air Force Reserve? Uh, they are under the 180 day uh, minimum uh, but they did serve our country. They did it for six years. They went to meetings. They did uh, summer camps. And I have talked to uh, a few of those gentlemen. And we are going to, um, at least I've, I've talked to one member of my committee, actually two members, uh, to recognize them uh, perhaps under others who have served and just put them on there so that they, they are recognized. And I think that'll... Um, that will solve a lot of the uh, problems they had back in 1970. So um, that is that's the that's the plan. Um, we're ready to go. Uh, I've contracted Sanam, contacted Sanam's uh, stonework. He's ready to go. I'm um, as soon as the funds are available. Uh, Snow's landscaping is is on our we're on their agenda. The flagpole is in. Um, the granite benches are being secured from uh, a company in South Hadley, and they will simply sit on a, uh, on a base, probably of gravel uh, and some small stone. Um, and, and then the only other thing I have, and Keith can help here, is the sidewalk. Where's, where's the existing sidewalk in the parking lot and the flagpole? Could you show that somewhere? Yeah, if you could put the other... Uh, the other uh, screen up, Brian. Okay, Fred, you you can see that sidewalk. Um, there's a more recent uh, copy of this, the sidewalk does extend down to Chestnut Plain Road. And I had them correct that. Um, we just haven't got that on the website. But that gives you the dimensions and everything is um, using as a flagpole as a benchmark. It shows the distances and, and how this thing is um, situated. Did that answer your question, Fred? Yeah. The, only, the only thing is, it's not, I don't think it's accurate on your, your drawing there is that 
sidewalk in front of the town hall goes directly into the existing sidewalk. There's no jog like that. Yeah, Fred, that can speak on that. All that's going to be taken out anyways. Okay. So that the, the sidewalk, as you are leaving the town hall and head south, you will then turn left and either head to Chestnut Plain Road or then go on to the new proposed sidewalk that'll go through at an angle and then proceed down in between the two rows of maples. There is no room just like we encountered like back in front of the library. There's no room to leave the existing, to put the new sidewalk where the existing sidewalk is because we would be on private property and we don't wanna have to destroy the maple trees. Um, this design, the way it's proposed right now is the three green circles are the existing trees that are right there, that are presently there. And that is working with them and leaving them in place. Um, the one that's under the, the, you know, the worst condition will, will do some um, major trimming, but it's our hope and intent that, that we'll be able to save them for some time to come and that they don't need to come down at this point. Okay. Uh, well, that sidewalk comes, joins the sidewalk at the side of the parking lot. Have you thought of, of coming off of the town hall sidewalk to make it more direct because in the wintertime, you need to get a vehicle to make that maneuver. It may be easier to, if it was more gradual rather than doing a right turn and then a left turn. If, if the sidewalk is moved any, the new proposed sidewalk through the park is moved any closer to the east, then it will destroy that maple tree. Well, I'm just looking at the, the connection where you have there at the end, at the, the north end of it where it ties into the sidewalk, the new sidewalk. Would it be easier for a winter maintenance if that was uh, gradual? Yeah, right there. Fred, I'm in a wheelchair and I wouldn't have any problem at all making those corners. I, I know, but in the winter, I don't, you've got a vehicle that's got to do that, a small tractor or whatever. I, well, just a thought, well, it would be easier to, to navigate or not. I don't know. I, I understand what you're saying, Fred. I, I, I don't think it's that, that big of a deal for the, for snow, like snow maintenance. Okay. You know, again, it was our, when with snows and sun, it was our design, our desire to keep the maple tree from being impacted and the root system of that tree to move that sidewalk anymore to, to make it, like you're saying, to make it easier for a snowing operation to clear would then be detrimental to that maple tree. Okay. And is the existing sidewalk on uh... East side going to remain until we decide what to do with it? It says to be relocated. Um, it would be removed. Um, it was our intent. If we, can, if we can't come up with enough funding to get the sidewalk all the way down to the first driveway, which would be the Roops driveway, we wanted to at least turn it, you know, have it done in gravel for the time being. Um, so that the sidewalk will at least have a continuation down to the driveway. Okay. Keith, what about doing all of that uh, sidewalk in, in blacktop? I, the, the ones you've got are wonderful. Yes, the, it, it was the, we looked at the difference between the, you know, the concrete and, and hot mix asphalt and the, you know, right in the center of this park, with the every just it was felt that concrete would be the best and most durable um it would match up with the current concrete sidewalks that are in front of the town hall and in the Waitley inn and then as it proceeds south it would transfer and that's something that we're looking at at a future um complete streets grant or some other funding to continue the sidewalk down 
further south, which would then remove the old existing sidewalk that's presently there. So in the meantime, your, your concrete sidewalk, is that gonna just end somewhere or is it gonna go to the driveway of the next property? That's what I was just saying, you know, I, it'll depend on the funding, how far that proposed sidewalk can head south. If it can't make it all the way to the drive, you know, to the Roops driveway, at the very least, the suggestion was that it would be left in some form so that people could still realize that that's what's there and can navigate using that. But it's, it's because we're dealing with two different projects. Yeah. So will the, the concrete sidewalk through the park here, will that be done under this project or is that gonna be later? It would be in this project. Okay. Yeah, I, I think the doing concrete concrete through there uh, is a looks better. It's an upgrade. It's a higher class sidewalk. I, I think it would be a lot better than doing bituminous. So I think that's a good good proposal to put concrete there. Okay. Was there anything else, Jim, that you wanted to talk about? I think I've, I've covered everything uh, that I have. Adelia, did you have any questions? I think I need to go over and, and in person. Um, my concern was how much empty space there was going to be. And it seems like maybe under the trees. Um, I know that the it looks like the area is going to be shrunk a little bit. Um, but I can't, I, I'm looking at a, 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 a plan and I think I need to go over and to uh, get the feeling of how far 91 feet is. I don't, I can't picture where Roop's driveway is at this point. I guess it's behind Brian Domina at this point. I don't know. Uh, from the Historical Society's point, uh, sometimes our events have, I guess, spilled over into the park area. And um, that was just a concern. I won't say a, a worried concern, but uh, just wondering. Well, actually, I think most of the land um, not precisely, but more or less to the west of the existing sidewalk is townland. And we were kind of hoping, hoping that this drawing sort of opened things up, so. But it's good to go and walk. I, I, I need to, I, I was looking for, I, I told for that piece of paper that was going to be on the front of the town hall door that I could take and walk out there and look at because just to look at these pictures um, I'm just not uh, I, I'm not going to describe myself I don't I wasn't feeling comfortable feeling um, uh, uh, how it was going to look or something so uh, this has helped me a lot and I will get over there and walk it around and see what I my feelings are um, <clears throat> Adelia, uh, I, I, think, I think you asked two questions, and the first was the dimension of this plan in comparison to the current uh, Memorial Park area, and I believe that 91 feet is actually farther than, than the uh, limit of the current park, um, but I'll, Keith or Jim can confirm that or say that I'm wrong. <laughs> okay, well, see, I, when I looked at those three circles, I didn't know what it meant until I just heard it's a three. Well, now I Adelia, can look at where the rotary stone is on, on, now, is that, is that on this. Moved? Yeah, it's going to be moved, but that will give you a focus for 
That's kind of the outer, the southern boundary of, of the park now, is that right? Okay, rotary? I got you. All right. Yeah, okay. And, and that will be... I can look at the uh, first tree. Adelia, that yes. 91 feet just about lines up with the, uh, the atrium on the, the uh, south, north side of uh, Roop's house. Oh, okay. So the driveway is another uh, probably 60 or 70 feet now from that. Okay, so we still have a good area. And of course, the other part of it is not just the historical society, but uh, where do you envision uh, the band might be if we continue having a Memorial Day parade? Um, is, uh, are they going to be able, you know, they're going to be able to fit in there and so Jim's checking his head. Yes. Okay, that's, you know, I don't want them to be out in the sun like they used to be. That's why we tried to preserve those trees. Initially, we we're going to take them down, and Keith did get uh, had a hearing to remove them, and then we decided we needed the shade there. The sun is oppressive on Memorial Day, so I, it'll give shade for the band and other participants. Good, thank you. Yeah, and there's only one thing I wanted to add, Brian. Um, the the care of this. Um, Ruth Leahy quite generously uh, committed funds for her late husband, Tom, when he passed away, memorial contributions for this area. And I have an informal agreement with Ruth that we would take that money, and it's about $2,000, and use it for care so that a landscaping firm like Snows can come in once or twice a month to keep things fertilized and trimmed and make it look good and not have to rely on, on Keith and his crew to have to come in and do this, this work. They probably would take care of the lawn mowing, but the care and fertilizing of the, of the shrubs and plantings, um, we would commit that money for as long as it lasted. So. Okay, Jim, the, the existing monument there, plaque, I, I understand you're going to upgrade some of the names on there. Are you going to use that existing plaque at all? Or are you putting a new one, completely new one there? We're going to use the existing plaque, Fred. And if there are any errors or omissions, we will, we will use one of the plaques amounted to the flat face boulders in the front. Trying to alter those plaques is very difficult, and it usually looks awful, okay. as they really can't replicate how it was cast in the first place. But if we've made error, and I, there are errors and omissions, so I've been informed, we will capture that under um, another another way. We're going to leave that intact. Okay, that's great. I'll bring up the uh, the original plaque is Center School, and I don't know, I, I don't feel the Historical Society owns it, and I guess the veterans don't know what to do with it either. And who does it belong to? Well, I think we can keep it, Adelia. Okay. It, it, until somebody uh, is is it's safe with us till somebody wants it. I just don't want the veterans to wonder where it went, or you know, I want it out there to know, let people know what's going on. Who's, who's the way you're talking? Historic Society. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Looks good to me. So what's our schedule? What's your, your schedule, Jim, for this? As soon as the funds are available, Fred, we're prepared to start. Okay. And, and we, you know, we could start with that stone wall immediately if the funds were there. I can contact him and he can, he can put it in. Before that goes in, however, we got to trench the electrical uh, conduit uh, from the flagpole to the telephone pole. That's not a big deal, just a, a two foot deep trench and put conduits so we get power out to that pole. Um, Mark Boussier has uh, given us a quote and uh, he knows that there is an empty conduit from that telephone pole into the town hall and that's where we're gonna run the wire. It's a much shorter distance and it would cost a lot less than trenching under the sidewalk to the, the uh, corner of the town hall. 
But once that once that conduit's in, the stone wall can go in almost immediately. Okay, because I think that there is a conduit on the side of that sidewalk parking lot, and also the the, the new water lines going to the town hall are in that area as well. So I assume they would be aware of that. Yeah, I'm sure Keith will be on, have that under control. There's not going to be a new water line. We're going to use the existing. Well, there, there was a new one put in already when we did the town hall. Uh, the, the thing that was not put in it may come about is, is a uh, bigger line if we ever going to put sprinklers in the town hall. <clears throat> Correct. That's as far as any the current water line going into the town hall. Yeah. None of, that, none of that will be affected at all. Okay. Does anybody else have any questions or comments? What's what's going to be along the edge of Chestnut Plain, Keith? Is there you going to put in curb and gutter or anything, or just the way it is now? Can you repeat that, Fred? Along Chestnut Plain Road, what's going to be the edge of the pavement? Are you going to put curbing gutter or slope pavement or anything there? At this point in time, the, the plan just, as far as I know, is to leave the edge of the pavement the way it is. OK. Uh, just a thought, though, will um, down where that 91 is, will people um, be tempted to drive on it? I thought we were trying to keep people from parking on that grass. Um, yeah, there is. I guess it is fair to say there is a possibility that they they could or would. Um, I don't know what to, how to answer that. Well, there is a fire hydrant there and there is a telephone pole. So there's not an awful lot of room for someone to park. People do. Well, and, and I'm just thinking we have no, I mean, we don't have a problem now with people parking on the grass in that section. So I, I don't know. I don't know why we think people would be more likely to ignore a parking lot and park next to a nicely installed set of gardens. Over time, Donna, I've seen cars parked all along that par uh, perpendicular to Chestnut Plain Road. I'm not saying that it, I'm, I'm just bringing it up because I know I've seen cars. In fact, I've parked there myself once or twice when I wanted to get to something there. So I'm just hoping it's discouraged. I, I've seen vehicles parked there as well over the last several years for different events going on in the center of town. People park there on the lawn and some even up real close to the monument even. Well, one, one thing that then could be addressed, um, I, I'd almost probably recommend that we take the wait and see approach would be to as you had mentioned a minute ago, Fred, to I could put berm all the way down. You know, I would need to push it. I would need to push it off the road a little bit so the snow plows don't hit it, but um, offset the a, a curbing or a berm a few feet off along that line parallel that 91 foot line, and that would protect it from cars driving up on it. Okay. I guess it's a good idea to do the wait and see, but I, I think that eventually you may find that a problem. It could be. Because the they're gonna, I assume they're gonna regrade and, and seed all of this area once they're done, right, Jim? It's it's a it's basically a flat plateau. There will be loaming and seeding added. Uh, but we're not changing any elevations, Fred. Okay.
Does anybody else have any comments or questions? Thank you very much. Oh. All right. Well, thanks everyone for coming. Donna, do we need anything else for the, the grant submission from this meeting, right? No. No, no I, th I think we're in good shape. No, we don't need anything else. Okay. <laughs> okay good night. Great. All right. Good, Brian. Yeah. Okay. Good night.